What's up guys, KYT here. With the Super Bowl taking place this Sunday, I thought this was a great time to do a video about the similarities I see between the sports betting market and the stock market. But before I continue, I do want to mention that I see from my stats that most of you are stumbling upon my channel because you're searching up about XEQT. I want to know in the comments from you guys, like what else do you want me to talk about when it comes to XEQT? Do you just want me to do monthly portfolio updates regarding the ETF or you actually have questions surrounding it? Please let me know and I'll do a video answering any of your questions. Now, I know a lot of people think they're sports experts, but the reason I think I know more than most people is due to one of my friendships. One of my great friends is none other than Ed Miller. Now, if you've been playing poker, you would know that he's one of the most prolific poker authors of all time. But now he's the chief architect at a company called Deck Prism that provides odds to some of the biggest sports books in the world, Pinnacle being one of them. And don't worry, one of the main takeaways is that most people should not bet on some of the major sports. Why? Because the market is fairly efficient. Some of you probably don't have any interest in sports, but hopefully some of this could be somewhat interesting to you. So when you go to a sports betting website, let's say you look up the Super Bowl game and you look at the money line, these are some of the numbers that you might see. This is between the, the Rams and the Bengals. So right now you can see minus 200 next to the Rams, which means you need to risk $200 to win $100. That's if you're betting on the Rams to win, the favorite. Uh, that represents a 66.67%, two thirds chance that they're gonna win. So in order for that to be a profitable bet for you, you have to think that they're gonna win more than two thirds of the time if they were to play this game over a thousand times. And like stock market prices, these prices, these lines will fluctuate as new information comes in. Something like the Rams, some of their players might have COVID or rumored to have COVID, then the price will adjust because if they don't, then sharp betters or the market will capitalize on these prices. And what we've found over the years is that the final price, the closing line, the price right before the game start is an accurate predictor of the games themselves, which makes sense because that's where all the information from all the market participants are priced in. That's an interesting. So it's a efficient market and a good predictor of football outcomes or any of the major sports. And while I agree with the market that the Rams are a good team, I won't bet on them because historically this is a pretty efficient price. I'm not going to get an edge on this price. So even though I think they're a good team, they're probably going to win. I'm not going to bet on them. And going back to stocks, that's why even if there are good companies out there that I think are good and profitable, that doesn't necessarily mean they are a good investment. The price, their stock price might not be at a good price to have positive expected returns. One of the more popular ways to evaluate a stock is using the DCF model. DCF stands for discounted cash flow, where you would estimate company's future cash flow, apply some sort of discount rate to arrive at their current intrinsic value. And you're using a discount rate because money in the future is worth less than money now. For example, you would rather have $100 now rather than five years. But going into the details of DCF is not the point of this video. The point is that there are a lot of market participants with their own model, with their own assumptions, their own inputs that change how they value a particular stock of a company. What you end up with is a fairly efficient price for the stock, which is why Tesla could be a good company, but I don't know if it's a good investment at their price. Same thing with the Rams. They're a good team, but I'm not gonna bet on them because I don't think the price, I don't know if the price is good or bad because it's efficient. Efficient, part of the efficiency, market efficiency hypothesis is that I can't consistently predict whether I'm getting a good or bad positive return on my money. That's why a lot of advice given by different YouTube channels, even by those that I like, is kind of misleading. It's They talk about investing in good companies, investing in companies that you know. They talk about going to a supermarket, checking out how Beyond Meat and Tattooed Chef is doing at your local grocery store, supermarket, to know if they're good buys. Now, if you've been watching this channel, then you know why I think that's ridiculous. How is this type of information, just you knowing, just you walking publicly in a public supermarket supposed to give you an edge, give you this secret information? It's not. So you're unlikely to beat the market with this type of information. Now, going back to sports betting, 
there are people that can beat the market. I personally know some of them. They are a very small percentage of the crowd because they have information that is not publicly available. They created proprietary models that allow them to beat the sports market. And it's the same way that I talked about in my last video that to be able to beat the market, you somehow have to have information that is grossly underlooked by the rest of the market or you just have insider information or easy access earlier access to information to be able to react to the market faster than the rest of the people all around. Now, I want to end this by saying that doesn't mean that everyone should not stock pick because it all comes down to your risk tolerance. A more concentrated portfolio of 5 to 20 stocks is going to be going to give you higher highs and definitely lower lows. And if you're comfortable with that, then go ahead. The key is being comfortable with that and being honest with yourself. And it is challenging to be honest with yourself when things are going well. What comes to my mind is the multiple YouTube channels that were able to become millionaires because of Dogecoin. And they said that they could afford to hold Dogecoin because if the, the price of Dogecoin were to fall, they could just get a regular job. But... Fast forward a couple months later when Dogecoin had dropped, they would say, wow, I really don't want to go back and get a regular job. So clearly when things were at a high, they were misevaluating how they would feel when the price would drop. You got to be really, really honest with yourself about the risk tolerance that you are able to take. And I mean, it's going to be hard to do that because it's hard to project how, your, how future you is going to feel. But I urge you to try as best as you can to be honest with yourself with that said i got some money on the bangles and i'll see you in the next video